For a sustainable energy future, the spice must flow. Yeah, indeed. The spice must flow. The new spice. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Greg M. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Elon's been saying it since the summer of 2018. The spice must flow. Just to set the stage, remember what Elon said on the Q2 call this year. He was urging entrepreneurs to get into the lithium refining business. Lithium is everywhere, but actually refining it to getting it to battery grade material is much more difficult. Saying there is like software margins in the lithium processing right now, you can't lose, it's a license to print money. One more interesting stage setter, going back to September 28th, 2020, Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, definitely the first to report that Tesla would indeed be creating this lithium refinery somewhere in Texas. So here it is, Tesla's application to potentially build a new lithium refinery in Texas. In this document, they are looking for some tax breaks from a local school district. Tesla is evaluating the possible development of a battery grade lithium hydroxide refining facility, the first of its kind in North America, as well as facilities to support other types of battery materials processing. Before we go any farther, I think it's very important to highlight this on the next page. Tesla is still evaluating the feasibility of this project. Only very preliminary development activities have begun. No engineering, procurement, or construction contracts specific to the proposed location have been negotiated or signed. No regulatory permit applications have been obtained. Skipping ahead, only agreements pertaining to preliminary design and engineering work and the development of other technical studies and estimates have been entered into, which is necessary for purposes of determining whether this project is technically viable and can be cost competitive in the global marketplace. Just throwing this out there, of course Tesla would want to make it sound like there's a lot of uncertainty to potentially help its chances when negotiating for actual tax breaks for this project. The application says this project could be located anywhere with access to the Gulf Coast shipping channel. Right now, Tesla is also evaluating a competing site in Louisiana. In the last paragraph, it goes on to talk about how the ultimate determination to deploy capital into this investment will depend on the project economics. If it works out, Tesla will process raw ore material into a usable state for battery production. The process Tesla will use is innovative and designed to consume less hazardous reagents and create usable byproducts compared to the conventional process. Then the final product, battery grade lithium hydroxide, will be packaged and shipped by truck and rail to various Tesla battery manufacturing sites. If this site is chosen, early construction could begin in the fourth quarter of 2022. The project will reach commercial operations by the fourth quarter of 2024. So gigafactories taking between 12 and 18 months and it looks like this lithium refinery could be pushing two years. My first question was, what would something like this cost Tesla? So doing a little digging, I found that Albemarle is also planning a US lithium refining facility this year. Albemarle said the same thing. Their potential facility would be in the US Southeast, somewhere within rail access of a major port. For what it's worth, Albemarle does already supply Tesla. They just recently opened a lithium refinery over in Western Australia, but this one, the cost ballooned above the initial target of $1.2 billion. While this news is very exciting, as it's said to have Tesla have one of the only lithium refineries in the United States, which is not bad for just a car company, we really shouldn't have seen it as much of a surprise. Going back to earlier this year when lithium hit all time high prices, Elon said these prices have gone to insane levels. Tesla might actually have to get into the mining and refining directly at scale unless costs improve. Concluding with the pace of extraction and refinement is slow. This is the bottleneck, so no surprise, Tesla now addressing this issue. The red pin right here is where Tesla is considering for the Texas site for the refinery, but remember if things don't work out, they're also considering an alternative site in Louisiana. At battery day, Tesla revealed a new lithium extraction process that it had also filed a patent for. So the big question is, will Tesla be using this new extraction technique at this possible refinery? At the time, Drew Baglino said this new process would result in a 33% reduction in the cost of lithium. Therefore, a means for economically extracting lithium from various lithium sources is important in order to reduce the cost of batteries and electric cars. 
We've been over this potential new process in videos in the past, but I'll include this article below if you miss them. I do think it's important to point out that Howard Klein from the Rockstock channel talking a lot about the lithium industry has said that these software margins and that license to print money Elon has referred to does depend on mining, not just refining. Essentially saying it's very important to actually own a lithium mine to keep a lot of those software-like margins. However, we also know that Elon has said the mining part is easy, it's actually the refining process that is much more difficult. Sounds like a good topic for a future channel interview. Right now, more than 80% of the world's raw lithium is mined in Australia, Chile, and China. China also controls more than half of the world's lithium processing and refining and has three-fourths of the lithium-ion battery mega factories in the world. Once again, this move by Tesla is a big deal for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is reducing reliance on China. In what should be a very encouraging line, the United States holds almost 8 million metric tons of lithium in reserve, ranking it among the top five countries in the world. So we have the resources, now we just have to build up these refineries to actually process it so we can put it into these EV batteries. If you follow Tesla back in the early days, you may remember Tesla actually tried to buy a lithium extraction startup company. It didn't work out. Basically what happened, Elon offered the company around $325 million. Then the company was like, oh, you know, started to feel good. Then they went to Jefferies and looked for an actual valuation. Jefferies came back evaluating the company around I think two billion dollars it was and then once Elon heard that he basically cut off the negotiations and no deal was ultimately done. The point being something like this for Tesla has been in the works now for a long time. So right now it looks like at the very earliest something like this wouldn't be up and running ready for commercial use until the end of 2024. It is not hyperbole to say that this type of vertical integration is completely unprecedented in the history of the auto industry. Just remember over the next next few years, this type of endeavor is definitely very risky, not necessarily from a financial standpoint, but from a capital, talent, and a time consumption standpoint. It's a very difficult task, especially if Tesla is going to try to implement a brand new extraction technique, which it seems likely that it'll try to do. Moving on, it looks like CNBC got its hands on some leaked audio from a recent internal meeting at Giga Nevada. First thing, the now former vice president of Gigafactory Operations, Chris Lister, is out, being replaced by Harushi Sagar. Taking a quick look at his LinkedIn page, I thought it was pretty cool to see he went from a production control intern in 2015, fast forward to now senior director of vehicle operations and manufacturing engineering, and now actually overseeing Giga Nevada. He will now report directly to the man himself. At this meeting, we got an excellent insight into the actual output and what's going on at Giga Nevada, but before that, they also talked about management changes, performance reviews, factory milestones, and aggressive new goals for the facility. As a refresher, Giga Nevada has mostly been focusing on battery packs, 2170s, and powertrains for different factories, as well as Powerwall and Megapack. First, the Fremont factory is now able to make around 12,000 cars per week and is aiming for 14,000 per week as its next goal, 14,000 per week times 50 weeks per year to allow for around two weeks of downtime is 700,000 units per year. He also added Giga Austin has hit the 1,000 per week production rate. Eric Montgomery, who is now managing the day-to-day -day at Giga Nevada, said that they need to get to a steady output of 8,800 high-voltage battery packs per week to support Fremont's new production goals and maximize all-wheel drive builds. And don't worry, at the end of this article, I did some math to pull this all together. Matt Reddick, another plant leader, said Tesla can now produce 42 giant megapack batteries in a seven-day rolling period. Tesla's on target to produce 442 megapacks during the third quarter. This would be an 85% growth over quarter two. And as far as I can tell, my interpretation of this article, they're just talking about production coming from Giga Nevada. This would not include any production coming from the new megapack facility in Lathrop. Giga Nevada also hit and has exceeded a production rate of 6,500 500 power walls per week. 
and Giga Nevada made 37,600 Powerballs in quarter two, set to grow another 22% in the third quarter. And lastly, Giga Nevada set to deploy a new advanced water treatment facility. This will eliminate the discharge of our site process water or wastewater, and it's going to allow for 98% water recycling and evaporation. It's a huge thing, it's aligned with our mission. For solar on the roof, they are now up to eight megawatts, and Tesla also has a new food vendor on site that provides poke bowls building a meditation room for employees, making road improvements, and installing more EV chargers along the roads around the facility. Sager, or Cigar, could not comment on the next Tesla Gigafactory. However, he did say, there is an exciting future for North America and all around the Americas. So tying this all together, if we take that 8,800 battery packs per week, just for Fremont, by the way, assume an average of 70 kilowatt hours per pack, that's 616,000 kilowatt hours per week or 0.616 gigawatt hours per week. Then multiply by 50 weeks in a year to allow for two weeks of downtime, brings us to 30.8 gigawatt hours per year just for battery packs for Fremont coming from Giga Nevada. Then taking the 42 mega packs per week times 50 is 2,100 per year times three megawatt hours per mega pack brings us to 6.3 gigawatt hours per year of mega pack production. Once again, this is just from Giga Nevada, nothing from the new Lathrop facility. And then 6,500 power walls per week times 50 is 325,000 per year. Multiply that by 13.5 kilowatt hours per power wall is 4.3 million kilowatt hours per year. Convert that to 4.3875 gigawatt hours per year of power wall production. Adding this all together puts us around 41.4 gigawatt hours per year coming from Giga Nevada. And possibly more because some of these 2170 battery packs could also be going to Austin for the Model Y ramp there as they still try to work through some of the 4680 challenges. So some shakeup and new energy now overseeing Giga Nevada, which oftentimes can be a very good thing. Moving on to a few quick news items. Remember when the NLRB ruled that Tesla had to allow employees to wear pro-union attire? Well, Tesla's apparently fighting back against that, filing a petition with the courts. Tesla Japan tweeted out that officially Model Y deliveries to customers have begun. And just one picture from one of the showrooms in Japan because who doesn't love looking at a brand new Model Y performance? Last night, Elon tweeted this out and I really loved his conviction saying solar panels, ground mount and rooftop paired with stationary batteries will be civilization's primary source of energy as sure as day follows night. Mark these words. Sawyer shared there have now been eight different Tesla VPP events in California over just the last nine days. What a perfect time to get this program up and running. Jim Farley said, we're rolling out Blue Cruise 1.2 with three new features, hands-free lane changing for easier passing, in-lane repositioning, and predictive speed assist to smoothly reduce speed into sharper curves. 75,000 plus Ford and Lincoln owners enrolled in Blue Cruise and Active Glide, around 16 million hands-free miles driven so far. Speaking of ADAS, referring to FSD 10.69.2, Elon said it's looking good so far for a release this weekend. Shout out to Ekapob for pointing this one out. We recently talked about Tesla hiring for new positions in Southeast Asia. Now they're actually hosting a walk-in recruitment day in Bangkok to be held September 16th and 17th and they're hiring for all these different positions sales store manager delivery operations service charging sales delivery and customer support here we have BMW issuing a new press release saying there's a new era of e-mobility coming in 2025 using newly developed round battery cells optimized for the architecture for the first time BMW has already awarded contracts in the two digit billion euro range for production of the new BMW battery cells. These BMW round or cylindrical cells come with a standard diameter of 46 millimeters and two different heights, one of which that will most likely be 80 for the 4680s. And BMW is set to use an 800 volt architecture. BMW already has contracts with CATL and EVE Energy. Each of the battery cell factories will have a total annual capacity of up to 20 gigawatt hours 
and plans call for two more battery cell factories to be built in the North American free trade zone. USMCA, basically a trade agreement between the United States, Mexico, and Canada, for which the partners have not yet been nominated. Meaning that BMW is currently undecided which battery manufacturer will build these two factories for North America. If you haven't seen it yet, the battery race is all the way on. And lastly, from Wirtschifts Voka, the Federal Motor Transport has been forcing Tesla to make some changes to its autopilot system. The KBA has carried out some tests on Teslas as part of a market surveillance and found abnormalities, but these have already been partially remedied by Tesla. For the remaining problems, further remedial measures are still being tested and validated. The last paragraph gets a little confusing. Now we know about these automatic lane changes that were causing some issues for being allowed in Europe. However, it goes on to say, the KBA complained that Tesla only unlocks some functions if the driver achieves a certain number of points depending on his driving skills, most likely referring to the safety score, which is really more geared towards Tesla's FSD, not autopilot, which comes standard on all cars. But the KBA said a vehicle must be so safe it can be operated by all drivers. Maybe something getting lost in translation here, but let me know what you think. That'll do it for today. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.